Thank you, and once again, good afternoon from Jakarta, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, we have here today uh, in our breakout on the industry uh, industry uh, sector. We have uh, four very good, very experienced uh, uh, speakers, uh, panelists. Uh, we would like to uh, invite everyone to listen up and to listen in and to uh, uh, pay attention to what we have to say, what the panelists have to say. So shall we begin? And we have here uh, the first speaker is Pa uh, Hikmat Drajat from PLN. Pa Hikmat, you have 15 minutes. The floor is yours. Please introduce yourself and then moving on to your presentation. Thank you, Pa Hikmat. Mongo, okay. silakan. Thank you, Pa Gatot. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> My name is uh, Hikmat Drajat. Uh, comes from uh, TTPLN uh, Persero as a uh, state on uh, enterprise on the electricity uh, providers uh, i will uh, share uh, my screens okay uh, i i will uh, present uh, the supplying clean power for industries uh, this is uh, one of the PLN uh, programs uh, in order to uh, deliver the service to the markets, uh, especially to the customers. Uh, our uh, taglines on the uh, current uh, corporate uh, transformations is uh, power beyond generations, means uh, we have been doing of the transformation for the uh, long term uh, uh, energy uh, services. The first, uh, we uh, we will uh, introduce our enterprise overview uh, 2021. Okay, uh, currently uh, general overview of the our corporations, uh, we install the capacity almost uh, 63.14 megawatts, uh, and uh, we currently manage the 79 uh, millions of uh, the customers. And of course, uh, we manage uh, almost 1.6 uh, trillion uh, Indonesian rupiah total assets and uh, 40, 44,000 uh, employer. And uh, our last uh, energy uh, sold uh, almost uh, 244 uh, terawatt hours, uh, which is uh, 261 uh, trillion rupiah. Uh, in Indonesia, of course, uh, electricity business model still uh, vertical integrated, uh, starting from the upstreams uh, to the downstreams. For the upstreams, uh, we operate uh, the power systems operations, uh, which is the comes from PLN Group and uh, the external uh, private IPP groups to supply to the grids, and then uh, we control uh, the centralized of the systems and going through the downstreams. And of course, in the downstreams, we uh, manage a centralized customer services through our uh, new uh, e-mobility uh, applications, PLN Mobile, and then uh, we manage uh, billing and sys uh, payment systems. This is uh, our uh, the new transformation uh, based on the digital transformations. Uh, there are uh, five initiatives. The first is the green. Green means uh, we have been doing of the builds on the green power uh, towards to uh, 16 gigawatts hour on the five to 10 years later. The second uh, perspective is the lean. Lean means uh, how to deliver uh, to the customers' uh, systems uh, with uh, the efficient uh, way. And the third, uh, our transformations, innovative. Innovative means how we can uh, provide to the markets is of doing business on the getting electricity. And the last, our trans transformation on uh, digitally, we uh, customer focus on uh, deliver services. This is the our uh, power supply uh, conditions. Uh, 
the current uh, conditions uh, almost uh, there are uh, many uh, elect renewable energy uh, systems which is uh, divided to uh, several uh, power systems in Java Bali uh, and, and Sumatra and also Kalimantan and the Sulawesi. Uh, our uh, power generation uh, based on the renewables, uh, 2025, uh, we will uh, reach uh, 20, 23% of the totally of the renewable uh, energy capacity of the uh, power plant uh, based on the renewable. This is the figure outs of the each uh, systems. Okay, uh, and then uh, I will uh, to explain how to deliver services to the market, which is uh, the clean power to the, the, the industry. On, based on our conditions, our supply conditions, almost 52% of the total capacity, the reserve margin, uh, 18.3 uh, gigawatts we have to deliver through the way. The first way is product development. And the second way, how we can deliver through the process development. For the product development, we already prepare standard products and then how to uh, equate uh, of the captive markets to take overs in order to, uh, to deliver to the green power to the industry. And then, of course, we have the electrification programs, uh, which is the agriculture uh, programs, and then the marine uh, electrifying program, and then transportations. We already uh, preparing to electric vehicle uh, systems, and then uh, renewable energy certificates, TV rooftop, a total solution. And also, we provide a product development from uh, to a critical supply for the customers. Of course, the second way we have to propose a process development through our applications, pale and mobile systems. This is the e-mobility and then uh, creating sales teams and then uh, CRM a collaborative uh, with the third parties like uh, the marketplace and so on. And the last, uh, the sharing economy model itself. This is a such of the an example of the our products uh, comes from uh, the household package, for instance. Uh, this is uh, the the regular products we have uh, delivered to the customers, and also uh, small medium enterprise package uh, in order to uh, supply to the small medium enterprise, and also the based on uh, event like uh, Ramadan events and so on, a social event uh, at the Ramadan process. This is uh, the how we uh, deliver to the captive power acquisitions based on uh, we uh, deliver uh, based on usage uh, the the electricity purchase to the customers uh, before uh, our captive powers uh, acquisitions take or pay. Then currently we change to the customers uh, how customers can use based on the usage uh, we call. Uh, take and pay, uh, take or pay uh, package to the uh, energy uh, deliver to the customers. And this is very flexibility away in order to change uh, the captive power uh, to supply to uh, buy PLN uh, power supply. Of course, this is the electrifying agricultures, one of uh, elect how to PLN electrifying the, in, uh, the electrifying uh, agricultures. This is some of the examples in the night on the farming area. Uh, the, our, uh, the plantations, uh, 24 hours, uh, got the, the, the lights from uh, the, the suns and uh, in the night uh, uh, comes from the, our supply to, to, to the farmings. Uh, the the, the, the goal is uh, first is the efficiency of the use of fuel means uh, we have to electrify, stop the fuel, and then increase productivity of the farmings. And of course, uh, the farming modernization and increase the value added uh, services. This is some of uh, our products del uh, already delivered to the uh, agri agriculture, uh, electrifying agriculture uh, area. 
and also uh, we uh, deliver to the uh, marine vessels it means we electrify to a temporary uh, supply to the uh, vessel on the marines in order to stop a diesel uh, supply to the uh, marine vessels and of course uh, currently we have been uh, preparing to electric vehicle transportations in order to uh, serve of the uh, electric uh, vehicles on the transportations uh, we deliver uh, charging stations uh, starting from the home charging uh, units and then uh, for the publicly uh, electric uh, vehicle charging stations we already currently um, built uh, several uh, charging stations on the public area you know uh, including on the toll road uh, rest area this is part of the how PLN electrify uh, on the new uh, electric vehicles transformations in Indonesia. This is the detail of the PLN supports to the electric vehicle ecosystems. We build uh, the electric uh, vehicle charge in platforms means uh, we uh, build the platforms on the applications uh, how the its uh, customers of a PLN can use uh, at home the charging stations with the discount tariff on the nights starting from uh, 10 p.m. to the 4 uh, e.m. In, in the morning. This is uh, the very, very attractive uh, tariff uh, in order to encourage uh, the electric vehicles in Indonesia. And also we have uh, how we can uh, electrify the stoves uh, before uh, we uh, already use the LPG and uh, currently we preferring to convert to the uh, electric uh, induction stoves uh, in order to uh, make uh, an efficient more at the LPG consumption to become the electrify uh, induction stoves. This is the roadmap of starting from this year until to 2030 uh, in the uh, road roadmap of the how uh, we prepare to uh, convert uh, from the LPG stoves to the induction stoves. This is uh, very attractive in order to to make uh, our uh, uh, efficiency on the LPG uh, consumptions. And also uh, the, the the new of the PLN products is the renewable energy certificates means uh, we deliver also to the uh, every multinational uh, company in order uh, to uh, make them a more renewable consumption of uh, the carbon uh, footprints on the products this is uh, some of the an example of the renewable energy certificates uh, which means uh, we already registers our uh, some of a renewable power plan uh, to the global uh, institutions in order to release the certificate on the global and uh, some of the multinational uh, company in Indonesia uh, already use our product uh, REC, Renewable Energy Certificate. This is part of how we can uh, deliver the clean energy to the industry uh, by our uh, product. And also uh, we already uh, released our uh, new products, uh, PV rooftop uh, as a total solutions uh, in order to uh, to deliver to the customer needs uh, who will uh, build the PV rooftop and a PLN can provide it as a energy purchase based on a PV rooftop a total solutions. This is means uh, in order to uh, how PLN uh, commits to deliver to the markets uh, by uh, the green powers uh, based on the digital uh, transformations. And this is uh, how we uh, currently uh, process development in order to make uh, better uh, customer services uh, through our uh, super apps uh, PLN mobile. Every uh, PLN customers can uh, download uh, these applications based on the uh, Android base and uh, iPhone base. Uh, it means uh, they can uh, customer service uh, self uh, by by themselves. It means uh, this is the PLN mobile. Uh, they can uh, uh, complain uh, directly uh, by uh, themselves and then 
if they want to upgrade the the new extra capacity they uh, just uh, click the new uh, extra capacity and so on and also uh, on the payment systems we already uh, provided by uh, these applications in order to make it see every uh, pln customers to make uh, to to buy some of uh, token on the prepaid uh, electricity uh, systems and then uh, also to uh, to pay uh, the the uh, electricity uh, each month for the their uh, billing uh, systems this is uh, what we call uh, super apps of the plns in the current uh, customer uh, services and also uh, uh, starting uh, last year, we already uh, make uh, CRM uh, uh, tools in order to uh, deliver the customer services better to the, our uh, market on the uh, public uh, services. Uh, we already uh, provided uh, tools uh, by uh, digital uh, tools, uh, customer relationships and management. And, and also uh, based on uh, our customers' experience, and then organize a database lead, and also uh, increase sales productivity. This is uh, how uh, process development uh, through the, our digital uh, transformations based on the customer services going through to the markets in order to make easy every uh, customers uh, will uh, communicate with uh, our team at the fields. Okay, uh, gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, of course, uh, there, uh, there are some, uh, uh, many, many initiatives uh, on PLN currently in order to deliver a clean power to the uh, markets in order uh, to make uh, customers better in uh, their services. I think uh, this is uh, our sharing uh, uh, this moment and uh, back to uh, our uh, moderator Spagatot. Thank you very much uh, for the uh, conscience. Thank you, Pa uh, Igmat. Perfect timing. Interesting that our PLN in Indonesia is uh, taken uh, seriously about energy efficiency, of course, and conservation of energy. And, and we, it is very interesting to see the programs and the initiatives that PLN has with regards to uh, this matter, uh, ranging from uh, electricity from green farming to uh, electric vehicles and uh, digitalization. So this is uh, very interesting indeed. Thank you, Paikmat, once again for your presentation. Next, um, coming up, I would like to introduce a gentleman whom I've known for some time. Uh, he has been uh, in Indonesia. In fact, he's probably becoming part of, of Yogyakarta itself. My friend, uh, the expert in uh, uh, trigen and cogeneration, Mr. Niels Warburg, will be up next. So if Mr. Niels Warburg can prepare himself um, to present and share his screen, his topic will be uh, cogen co and trigen in uh, uh, technology for energy efficiency. I have been informed and I've been learning that the first fuel is energy efficiency. So um, uh, Nils, uh, the floor is yours, take it away. Thank you very much. And uh, also from my side, a warm welcome to the audience uh, and uh, a quick introduction after the welcoming words of Agathot, my name is Niels Warburg. I'm representing a German company in Southeast Asia and indeed based in Indonesia. We have our original presence for the company Aprovis, which is again a German based company, but with a focus on the region, this emerging markets here in Southeast Asia. We have been busy here for quite a while, more than 10 years, learning about the needs and the condition of the industry sector and the need for energy and also improvements in terms of energy efficiency. Uh, I will directly dive into the topic by sharing my desktop and presentation, going into the presentation mode. And here 
we go to have a look on uh, not the, the factory here. This is the headquarter of Aprovis, as you may see. This is Germany, not Indonesia, not Jakarta. This is snow that you can see. So uh, yeah, we are medium-sized. Aprovis is a medium-sized company uh, as equipment provider. Yeah, we have learned to focus on the niche market, on a certain niche market, which we now go more into detail, but with a huge amount of potential, huge potential for energy savings and uh, in numbers, yeah, in, in CO2 emission reductions, what now everybody is talking about. That is mainly uh, then already the segue to the, uh, to the, Techno technology behind it. Yeah, so now we are coming from the holistic picture that was given by Pahikmat regarding the energy supply in terms of electric energy. And now we see here a picture of the installation of a typical power house in a factory or industry based power supply. And this is heat recovery equipment, meaning we combine now different aspects of power supply and see the overall power supply of this factory to look how to combine certain equipment to become more efficient in total. This is called the combined heat and power concept in short CHP. Yeah, and this is slide. I will introduce you the concept, what is behind that. So we have learned that PLN as a power supplier here in Indonesia is available with certain packages also to support the industry sector with power, which is simply necessary in order to produce certain products. Yeah, so it's all about the output of this, of the industry sector that we generate a certain product to be sold on the market, maybe also the world market. So now with the CHP concept, we have not only the focus on the electric power, which we see here with, uh, on the, in the arrow on, on top, but we combine this electric power now with certain other demands in a factory. Typically, there is a demand for cooling power. Yeah, when we think about, uh, about the uh, office buildings, but also cooling processes in the factory itself may require certain cooling power when we talk about pharmacy, for example. Yeah, so there's uh, then already the possibility to combine electric power con uh, production at site with cooling power. And this always requires some kind of primary mover, yeah, prime mover. This prime mover can be a gas engine or can be also a gas turbine typically. So we talk about the small or medium sized powerhouse, which is decentralized, it is located at the factory and uh, at site and producing electric power. And at the same time, as we see here, for example, cooling power or steam at a certain steam pressure, for example, in the tire factory and the tire manufacturing process, steam is uh, needed for the galvanization process. Also heat is needed, drying processes, or we think about additional incremental power, the organic ranking cycle. So there are several options. However, it's always a combination, the more holistic picture, not single, uh, single power demands, electric power on one hand, on the one hand, and uh, for example, steam demand on the other hand, we think it together to finally come up with a CHP concept. More in detail now, as I said, the prime mover and typic typically is a gas engine or gas turbine. Yeah, so at a certain point, a uh, certain size of factory is typically making the consideration, coming to the consideration to invest into a, yeah, a, a, their own power supply. Anyway, uh, boilers are needed to provide the steam or also uh, here the uh, the, the cooling power when we talk about chillers. And now to consider a central, a decentralized, uh, like a, a local power house driven in this example with a gas engine and the hot exhaust gas of the gas engine, uh, which we also know when we touch the exhaust uh, pipe of the motorbike, uh, it's always 
uh, quite hot and uh, even can cause some, some injuries. Yeah, so this hot exhaust gas, this is what we take. And here we see the exhaust gas line following the single equipment, which is typically installed also then in this kind of power application. So catalytic converters and silencers for the emission control itself yeah, to, to apply uh, this equipment to comply with the local regulation. And then the heat recovery equipment can be steam boiler yeah, or economizer for the feed water preheating process, exhaust gas heat exchangers. And then what we release to the atmosphere is the cooled exhaust gas. So exhaust gas is simply cooled down and we utilize this free energy. So with a clear example here, just for a typical size of gen set, yeah, it's not the genset that we use for backup, a diesel-driven genset. That is a different application. Here it's really the continuously running base load. Base load concept where a stable power is supplied to the factory electric power. In this example, two megawatt or 2000 kilowatt electric power supplied straight to the factory. That doesn't mean it is working independently. Still the connection to a PLN is there. Yeah, it's simply helping also to reduce the peak loads of PLM because the base load is already covered. And then PLM is simply uh, like topping up the, temp the, the electricity demand by the grid connection. So we have now summarized here the most typical applications. Alternative one, I've called this one is a waste, waste heat recovery boiler. So while producing the own electricity to make a watt, there is free steam. Again, just take the exhaust gas, no additional burner or flame or something. It's just the exhaust gas, the hot exhaust gas, instead of releasing it straight to the atmosphere, it's utilized now to produce steam, more than one ton per hour, which is supporting the steam line in the factory with free steam. So it's a one-time investment. After that, this is free energy. Alternative two, we combine this steam boiler now with a vapor absorption chiller or the double effect absorption chiller that is needed to generate cooling power out of heat. Sounds strange, but it's a state of the art technology, not coming from our progress. We collaborate with several suppliers in that field, but it's a typical installation, especially here in the tropical countries to utilize exhaust gas heat and come up with cooling power to be provided to the to the, uh, to the office buildings or to the production process. In this example, two megawatt electric power again, additional free cooling power of 650 RTs, roughly estimated. Alternative three, now we talk about hot water or thermal oil application. When in a starch factory, for example, uh, the drying process driven by thermal oil, or when we talk about packing industry, a thermal oil demand, a hot water demand is there to melt the plastics granulate can be provided by the hot exhaust gas in a range of roughly one megawatt thermal power, again, for free. Yeah, so all this is working not in parallel. It's uh, actually either way, alternative one or two or three. Yeah, but you see there are several options that are, that are on the table to discuss with CHP application. Again, that free energy, how come actually that we can gain such a uh, such an additional output? This is now summarized in this graph here where we see the energy generation efficiency of this powerhouse there, the, the local power plant for this factory uh, in this example. Again, one gen set. The gen set typically uh, gas engine generator, we see it here with uh, on the second row from the bottom, typically comes with an electric efficiency of 40 to 50%, meaning more than 50% of the fuel is just burned to be released to the atmosphere and doing nothing. Except we look now into these CHP options, combined heat and power or combined cooling heat and power. And this is now utilizing this remaining portion, this hot exhaust gas and also jacket water, cooling water for the engine, for example, to generate, again, something useful for our production process. 
And this is how we end up in the green zone in efficiency values, overall efficiency values of more than 60, 70%. Yeah, up to 80 or 85 percent. In Germany, the, the highest efficiency rate is more than 90 percent. But this is a, uh, like a uh, district cooling and district heating circuit where we can always utilize the maximum portion. One more technical slide, and then I will release you back to the more uh, more general picture here. Yeah? But with this energy flow chart, I just want to make sure that this message also. Uh, is conveyed that the primary power again, this is the natural gas in our example, or the fuel, so to say. Again, electric power for gas engine, typically here, uh, the output 42%, 40 to 50%, let's say. This is the mechanical output, this is the electric power that we get. So sure, there are losses, heat dissipation, dissipation. But we see here in this example then, like, Actually, uh, still a portion of 30 to 40 percent is remaining as useful thermal power that we can utilize to finally uh, to to be used in the factory process. And this 40 percent, this red circle power, this is what we focus on to use it instead of just dumping it to the environment. So we finally, not only in terms of carbon footprint, we generate like profitable assets. There's a one-time investment, but this turns out to be cost effective after quite a short period. Yeah, sometimes we talk about two or three years, so maximum four years return on investment for this kind of combined heat and power application, simply because of the high efficiency. So it's self-production on the one hand, but also the grid connection still necessary yeah, it's a combination. We work hand in hand with PLN in that aspect. Where to start with all that? Well, now power dump demand evaluation. We just again look at the holistic picture, the factory user requirements that are given. And here I copied your table, which is like the first thing that we can do. Just go to the factory, to the production, uh, to the head of production who knows best about all the production processes, but doesn't care too much about the powerhouse. Yeah, I need the power to produce. So somebody else is taking care of this, of the power supply. But in order to come up with a heat recovery concept, we first of all evaluate what is needed. And then we find the best way to combine all this. You see then here the overview of fields of sectors that are relevant for this kind of technology. Yeah, so in the agriculture business, landfill, wastewater treatment, several opportunities, but for sure the industry sector, the mining sector, utility plants, and also data centers. And um, one more look into this state of the technology, which is widely proven. It's nothing, it's not rocket science. It's just a thoughtful picture of the whole process, considering all aspects. Closing with the examples you may have heard here, most of these names, these are the typical engine manufacturers that we collaborate with. Again, a process is equipment provider, so we provide this heat recovery equipment in collaboration with the primary prime mover, with the, mostly the gas engine or gas turbine manufacturers. My contact data, this presentation will also be provided then by the committee, and you can also contact me, I'm happy to assist for any further evaluation. And having said that, I hand back over to Pagatos to continue the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Herr Nils. Um, very, very useful, very short. I wish we could uh, discuss more. Nils, I know it's, uh, it's a topic that everyone should be thinking about. Uh, efficiency is, is uh, should be on the top agenda in every industrialist these days. Thank you once again. We will await for uh, questions. Uh, uh, we will put that towards the end of the of our um, of our panelists here. Next on the on the speaker on in, in line will be Dr. Uh, Tawarat Sutabut, um, and he's 
actually the Inspector General of the Ministry of Energy of Thailand. He, uh, Dr. Tawarat is, uh, is basically involved uh, in his day to day in, um, in the government regulations. And um, his topic today will be what would be the challenges of small medium enterprises uh, in energy efficiency? Because usually uh, people would say, would think, would look, would see that energy efficiency is only for those who can afford. And small medium enterprises uh, usually is, is thought to be not able to do that. But I hope to hear something different from Dr. Tawarat. Dr. Tawarat, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sawadee Krab. Thank you, Pat Kato, for your kind introduction. I have a slide uh, to be sent to you. Um, well, as Pat Kato mentioned that I, I would like, my topic of presentation today is about the challenges in energy efficiency in the small and medium enterprise or SME. But again, as, as uh, Pat Kato mentioned that I come from the government. So my presentation is more towards of the uh, policy side, not, not very much of the technical side. Uh, I have, I have uh, three agendas to present to you today. First of all is to summarize a brief uh, situation about my country on an energy, energy landscape. And also my second point would be our current plan to enhance energy efficiency. And last but not least, some notable measures on energy efficiency that could affect some SME on both a technical, a financial, but also last but not the least, I think SME need this the most is the public awareness and the public perceptions and knowledge about the uh, energy efficiency. Well, first of all, Thailand is about uh, a, a, a size maybe three times smaller than Indonesia, but uh, our energy consumption is approximately uh, 76,000 kilotons of oil equivalent, in which that would equal to 1.5 million barrel of oil equivalent per day. And uh, one third of that consumption would be consumed in the industrial sector, another one third in transportation. And in the industrial sector, about 20% is consumed by the SME. But the, the main problems in the energy efficiency in the SME has some, you know, a barrier. Uh, from the research uh, that we have in the past 10, 10 years, the list of the six obstructions has been in place for a long time. The first, the first is, it seems to be energy efficiency seems to be in the low priority investment by management because most SME, once they have money, where they probably think about the production uh, expansion and probably doing more of the marketing, but not on the uh, efficiency uh, driving measures. Secondly, uh, some of the project in energy efficiency seems to be either unattractive, the margin is very thin, or sometimes it is quite unclear on the risk and return of the project. The third point is the energy efficiency can have a complexity in the MRV process or measurements, uh, 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 reporting and the verifications. And fourth, energy efficiency always is a small project. It's not a large mega plant but it's a small a collective, a small project that could bring to more uh, and lean uh, process in the, uh, in, 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 in the productions of almost every industry. And if the financing of energy efficiency is still very conservative, I would say, and 
the access to the cheap financing is still a big barrier for small uh, enterprises. And last but not least, the sixth point is a lack of a good monitor evaluation and assessment uh, activity that could provide some good feedback for most of the SME. So we have to tackle all this by a combination of uh, carrot and stick measures that include some kind of a regulation and also some kind of a financial instrument to promote more energy efficiency. So that the Ministry of Energy draft a policy and directive to make sure that energy efficiency together with the renewable energy can be the mainstream of the policy in the next few, in the next decade. In Thailand, we have a target to reduce energy intensity by 30% in 2037. As of today, the current uh, reduction is about 8.2%. The baseline is at 2010. And in these challenges, and Thailand has experienced some um, uh, barrier and obstruction due to COVID and the pandemic has hit our economy very hard. The demand in electricity has been evaporated. The SME, a lot of SME has gone bankrupt and the energy efficiency projects seem to be less and less important to implement in the next 12 months. So we have to make sure that the plan that the government has is um, encouraging to stimulate more investment. And also the government try to promote some technical support and provide more intense financial incentive to make sure that the SME can invest in some of the energy efficiency technology. And also we have a plan to electrify our transportation sector and promote digital technology such as the IoT to make sure that energy efficiency and renewable energy can go hand in hand with the digital disruption. So the policy in Thailand has a three point or three steps uh, measures, including we have an, a law, Energy Conservation Fund Act, which is, has been enacted since 1992. It is uh, obligated uh, a, a large uh, energy consumer to perform some kind of energy management, set a goal, set a team, you know, and provide uh, reporting on the annual basis to the Department of Alternative Energy Development and Efficiency or DEDE, who is a regulator on this front. The en Energy Conservation Fund or ENCON Fund also provide some money to stimulate the energy efficiency activity. It provides some kind of a revolving revol fund and some small grants for those who need it. And we also provide with the studies to make sure that the standards such as building code and the uh, uh, labeling program is in the forefront of the technology advancement. Last but not least, we set the goal in our EEP or energy efficiency plan to reduce the energy intensity by 30% within uh, the next uh, 20 years. And next, I would uh, uh, elaborate more on our current energy efficiency plan. The, as I mentioned to you, the goal is, is to reduce the energy intensity by 30% by 2037. And right now, as I mentioned, that the reduction has been uh, progressed to 8.2%. The plan comprised of three pillars, including the compulsory or mandatory uh, measures for most of them for the large energy consumers, including the uh, energy conservation uh, uh, practice. Uh, we also provide some standards for building energy code and also the energy efficient resource standard for the power generations. And also the second pillar would be a voluntary that uh, <clears throat> provide uh, some pipeline for the consumer, including standards and labeling. And we also provide some uh, financial instrument 
a financial incentive uh, through many mechanisms such as the ESM bidding or soft loan program. And we also promote the ESCO activity in the country. Last but not least, we provide some complementary uh, program that would include capacity buildings, public relations and awareness, and also try to have some money to promote research and develop on this. And the, the, some of the energy efficiency measures that would include uh, the technical specification and roadmap. One of the notable one is the building energy code. Right now it's become a minimum standard and now we are on the process to promote into the, the green buildings. And by 2030, we would promote it, it to be a zero energy building. And with that, the key technology that could uh, go hand in hand is the district pooling. That uh, as uh, Niels Wahlberg, my uh, uh, speaker, my previous speaker, mentioned that the co-generation or tri-generation is very uh, uh, complementary on this particular application. At the moment, in Bangkok, this technology is booming. Uh, not only just the government buildings, such as uh, this slice, uh, the government complex in Bangkok, which is the one million square meter big building, uh, it has uh, a, a tri-generation uh, uh, capacity uh, 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 both for cooling and electricity. And also we plan for another mega project which is called uh, One Bangkok and the forest tria which is the mixed use of uh, office buildings and, and residential area. And uh, all of them has a district cooling and a smart technology that apply in this particular project. And also in um, uh, Jualongkorn University, we have a plan to promote the district into the Jualongkorn Smart City, which include the mixed use of uh, office, condominiums, hospital, retails, and residential. And again, this is backbone by district cooling and district energy uh, technology. And as I mentioned to you that uh, one of the things that SME would provide to do is to make sure that they can uh, use the high efficient uh, electric appliances. Uh, we provide the labeling program, which is a number five program that is done by ECAT and DEDE on both electrical uh, home appliances and non-electrical home appliances. Right now we have more than 30 products which is, has been labeled. And going forward, we will promote the digital uh, hybrid uh, convergence of the internet of things into everything. Uh, it would equip with the uh, controls, programs that could uh, utilize the solar energy in, during the day and utilize the uh, cheap off, off, off peak power from the grid during the night, for example. And uh, last but not the least, the program that we are promoting also uh, focus on the SME, uh, agriculture SME. Uh, we promote a smart farm uh, application that could control uh, the utilization of electricity within the farm. Either it's a pump or is the uh, water aerations or cooling or heating for every type of farms. Last but not least, as I mentioned to you that the SME need electricians. So the Thai government has put very emphasis on the public perception and promotion. One of the very successful program that we have done for many years is Thailand Energy Awards that could lead to the ASEAN Energy Awards. And some of this could recognize the front runner of technology advancement in energy efficiency and renewable energy that apply into the SME. And that's my 
uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Back to you, Prakato. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Kuntarawat. Uh, it is good to see that our next door neighbor in Thailand is uh, take the government, the regulators are taking a very active role in bringing in and ushering in energy efficiency and renewable energy uh, to this extent that um, its activity, its involvement is quite deep into even awards and, um, and also our policy. So thank you once again, uh, we will wait for, um, you know, for, to answer the Q&A if there are any questions later on. But of course, last but not least, I have Mr. Bjorn Odenbro from Oz Azelio uh, as our last panelist. Uh, Bjorn is at the moment based in Beijing, right? Bjorn, maybe you can start by introducing yourself and your company briefly, and then uh, presumably you would go forward to your um, presentation. Thank you, Bjorn. Uh, thank you, Pakato. Uh, and uh, I'd like to apologize if I mispronounced that. Um, good afternoon, everyone, uh, or good morning, depending on where you may be. Uh, I'd like to start off by thanking the organizers to, uh, to invite me to, uh, to speak here. It's uh, indeed a privilege. Um, my name is Bjorn Odenbro, and I'm the uh, Director of Global Business Development at Azaleo. Uh, as Pat Gatot has already pointed out, I'm, I'm based in Beijing, where I've been for, for almost two decades. And here I've been uh, in, in the greater renewables and, and tangen tangential industries for uh, about 15 years. Uh, Indonesia is pretty new to me and to, uh, and to Azalea. We're still finding our ways there, hoping to make interesting connections. Uh, through the IEECCE conference. Uh, also, I should point out that we're probably the, uh, the uh, odd man out in uh, this panel because we are not really uh, in energy efficiency. We are an, uh, an energy storage for renewable energy sources. Uh, so hopefully, um, like, the, uh, like the ugly duckling, uh, <laughs> once uh, bloomed into a uh, majestic swan, uh, you will uh, find that we are still a pretty interesting company. Now, as I understand, I'm not sharing my own screen. So could someone help me uh, put my presentation up? Would be much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think we can go straight to the next slide. So uh, Aselio, a quick overview of Aselio. We are a Swedish company list, uh, listed on the NASDAQ First North Stock Exchange in Sweden. That's the Stockholm Stock Exchange. We're uh, Gothenburg, we're Gothenburg based uh, with uh, two factories in Normal and Uddevalla. Uh, myself, I'm based in Beijing. I have my team uh, in business development in Stockholm. And we also have project management offices in uh, Morocco and Madrid. Uh, to date, our commercial footprint for the test pod is about 400 kilowatts, but we have 187 uh, Stirling engines deployed in different solutions. Uh, I think we'll go to the next slide. Thank you. So we all know the problem. The world is uh, electrifying fast uh, with renewable energy sources and in order to, uh, w which are unfortunately, even though they're fantastic in uh, technologies, they are intermittent in their nature. Uh, next slide, please. So what we, what we do is uh, that we uh, try to fill out the gray area on this graph. The example here is PV, which experiences uh, uh, a short power production every day when the sun shines with a peak somewhere, somewhere around noon, uh, but it does not offer anything when the sun doesn't shine. Uh, next slide. 
this this is our uh, this is our concept down in the right hand corner you see our test pods which is a thermal energy storage uh, coupled with uh, renewable energy sources such as pv or uh, or wind power in this example it's uh, powering a uh, a rural village um, we'll go to the next slide Uh, and the next slide again, thank you. Our groundbreaking in, uh, innovation, uh, the test pod is pictured here on the uh, right hand of the slide. It's a uh, phase change material uh, of recycled aluminum alloy capable of storing energy for 13 hours with a uh, six hour charge. It can deliver both heat and electricity. Uh, we warm the phase change material to, to uh, 6 degrees for six, 600 degrees for six hours and can then take 13 hours out. There is uh, no degradation and we can store power for several weeks in this. Next slide, please. The, uh, the core technology of our solution is the uh, Stirling engine. Uh, it's also the more complicated part of the technology. Uh, it has a 13 kilowatt output uh, with very long service intervals of 6,000 hours, uh, operational hours, so that is about 1.3 years. It's efficient and reliable, and it's been tested for uh, well over 2 million hours in different configurations, uh, as well as perfected over 25 years. It's, a, it's actually a spin-off from the Swedish uh, company Kokums. Uh, Acelia was founded in 2008 and have deployed our Stirling engine in a number of configurations, such as together with landfill gas, with a uh, gas burner providing heat to the engine, uh, concentrated solar power. Currently, however, we use it in our test pod solution for thermal energy storage, and we'll move on. And next slide, please. The, uh, the, the test pod then, uh, as I mentioned, is a long uh, duration energy storage capable of delivering energy for 13 hours after the sun sets or, or maybe even the wind stops blowing. Uh, therefore, it's most suitable for long duration, for, for, for base load uh, power generation in uh, off grid or mini grid configurations. Uh, if you only um, if you only utilize the electricity from the engine, you get a 29% round trip efficiency. Uh, however, if you also utilize the low temperature heat of 55 to 65 degrees, you get up to 90%. Uh, so a very, very high round trip efficiency from the system. Um, what you see here in the picture is the, uh, the test pod. Uh, Behind the white hood is the uh, energy storage, the phase change material, again, uh, aluminum silicate, which, which is heated electrically by, by uh, renewable energy. And the heat is then conducted through, uh, through a heat transfer fluid uh, to the uh, engine, which is on the back of the test pod under that gray hood. Uh, next slide, please. So I apologize, this, this picture isn't coming through really clear, but uh, if you look at the, uh, the, uh, the various strong points of our system, you get the, uh, the 24 hours energy production uh, potential with renewable energy. Uh, it's low cost, it's cheaper than diesel and batteries. Um, if you can also utilize the heat, it has one of the best round trip efficiency on the market. Uh, due to the fact that the heat storage, unlike uh, batteries, does not, uh, does not um, experience any degradation during its 30 year lifetime. 
uh, you will also not need you will also not need to uh, make any replacements uh, during the the lifetime of your project. Uh, the test pots are designed to perform in harsh environments. We're looking at a number of of key countries uh, around the globe in both cold and very hot countries. Uh, because the test pod is modular, you will also, in a larger project, not have any downtime, downtime during service, as you will just take the test pods offline in uh, clusters to, uh, to service and maintain them. Uh, lastly, all components in the uh, test pod are recyclable, and the aluminum, which is the main part, uh, there is recycled aluminum going in, and then after 30 years, you can recycle it again. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I would like to direct your uh, attention to the uh, upper right corner here with the uh, LCOE, where you see that the LCOE of our test pod is uh, 93 uh, euros per megawatt hours as compared to the, uh, the technology that we're mostly uh, seeking to replace, uh, which is uh, diesel, where it's uh, 225, the, the, the same number would be 225, with lithium ion batteries there in the middle, uh, uh, still uh, a fair, fair deal higher than the test pod for, for a base load uh, solution. Uh, we'll move to the next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. The, uh, the uh, test pod is a wonderful technology, uh, but it's not for all, uh, for all situations. This graph here uh, at the bottom, you see the uh, storage time required. And uh, on the vertical axis, you see the, uh, the, installed, uh, the installed power uh, of, of storage required. Uh, 100 megawatts and above, we find uh, CSP uh, solutions like storage or truck, very difficult to compete with. Um, and if you require zero to four or, or perhaps even six hours of storage, lithium ion batteries provide a uh, cost competitive uh, source of energy storage. However, uh, for longer duration storage and, and, uh, and the project smaller in scale than, than uh, CSP, we find our niche. Uh, and with the test pod, we can do projects due to its modular nature, nature we can do projects of 0.1 to 100 megawatts in scale. We'll do the next slide. Uh, this is not very relevant to this, uh, to, to this panel. I just wanted to, uh, to direct your attention to it. This is a uh, case where, where we are uh, for a project in agriculture where we achieve 81% 80, uh, CO2 reduction, displacing grid, power and wood burning, uh, as well as a 17% reduced cost of electricity. Uh, you can go onto our website and find other cases that may be more relevant to what you are doing. And there is also a wonderful tool there that we call the, uh, the calculator, where you can put in the parameters of your project and get a uh, report uh, to show how much, uh, how much uh, cost and, and CO2 the test pod will uh, save you. Next slide, please. And we can skip this one as well. This is another case for mining. Uh, as I said, the uh, test pod is uh, fully recyclable. It doesn't use any scarce material, uh, unlike uh, lithium ion batteries, also no, uh, no conflict materials. It gives a, uh, and, and this is the, uh, the lifetime of the system, it gives a 96% lowered uh, carbon uh, emissions uh, compared to, to a diesel genset. 
but because it's all then recycled, uh, it also gives 29% uh, lower carbon emissions than uh, battery storage. And we'll move to the next slide, please. The test pod has won uh, several awards. Uh, I would perhaps like to, uh, to point specifically to mission innovations, uh, to being listed by mission innovations as one of the top 100 solution providers for, uh, for combating climate change, as well as the uh, solar impulse uh, efficient solution label as one of the leading 1,000 solutions capable of tackling climate change. We'll uh, go to the next slide. Excuse me, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's all uh, made in Sweden. It's made in Swe uh, as, as its engine technology. Uh, it's, uh, our company is based in Sweden's engine cluster. Uh, where, where Volvo and Saab, uh, the, uh, the automakers, came from. Uh, we can move on. Uh, next slide, please. Yes. Uh, this is our high-volume uh, uh, factory in Uddevalla. Uh, it's capable of making 23,000 units per, per year, uh, total uh, installed capacity of, of 300 uh, megawatts of energy storage. We'll move to the next slide, please. We have three uh, pilot projects out uh, around the world. We have one at our technical center in Ormol, Sweden, two modules installed. We have another two modules installed in Guatsasarte in Morocco. And we have another four uh, modules installed in Abu Dhabi with Master and Khalifa University. Next slide, please. We have also made uh, our, our early commercial installations, the first one being in, uh, in Dubai. Uh, it's, and next slide, please. And a second commercial installation in, uh, for an industrial facility in uh, Åmål in Sweden. We'll move on. We have, the way we work around the world is that we form partnerships with, uh, with uh, companies in, in, our, uh, in, in, in the uh, countries that we think are uh, important to us. Uh, we have yet to form one in Indonesia. As I said, Indonesia is new to us, even though it is one of the uh, top 10 countries we have identified in, uh, around the world that could benefit from, from the uh, test pod solution. Uh, we have 14 partnerships signed to date. Uh, next slide, please. And I think we can go to the next slide. Uh, very quickly, I will wrap up. Uh, we, are, we, we, uh, we see the following eight segments around the world uh, as important to us. Uh, in Indonesia, we're still trying to determine which are the most important agriculture mining resorts. Uh, telecoms, where we look at data center and telecom towers that need to be powered with clean energy or, or in off-grid uh, configurations. Water treatment, oil and gas, uh, communities on mini-grids and rural electrification. Basically anything off-grid and distributed is where, where, where uh, diesel is used for, for uh, base load is interesting to us. And the next slide, please. Uh, these are some of the strategic partnerships we work uh, with around the world. Uh, Masen in, in Morocco, Mastar in, in the Emirates, and, and uh, the Khalifa University, Chalmers University, and KTH. Uh, we'll go to the next slide, please. And I think I will leave off there. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and for listening to me. Uh, I'll hand it back to uh, Pak Atok now. Thank you so much, Bjorn. Uh, very interesting indeed. Uh, to be frank, uh, this is the first time also I hear about this product. Uh, there is a question from the audience participant. 
but um, uh, the person is interested, so we'll uh, we'll take care of that uh, presentation of yours. I think we, it is okay to distribute, right, Bjorn? Yes, it's okay to distribute. Thank you. Okay. Good. Well, uh, I think that's wrap up our panelists. We have uh, four excellent panelists. You've just heard from PLN, Pa Hikmat, and then from uh, Aprovis uh, with uh, Niels from Yogyakarta. And of course we have uh, Bjorn, and then of course we have Dr. Tuarat from uh, Thailand. Now, um, I'm opening the uh, session for Q&A, uh, giving the opportunity for uh, everyone to ask questions to our panelists. And as usual, um, being the moderator, uh, while we are waiting for the questions from the participant, if I may, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Uh, Tuarat from Thailand. Uh, you know, it's interesting that uh, energy efficiency has been a very important um, uh, uh, important thing in uh, in our modern life, becoming more and more important. Uh, but we realize, uh, because I am from the private sector, we realize that we cannot do it alone, and uh, and the government really have to step in and support the private sector who who is both oh sorry who are both do want to make business that is that is uh, admitted but at the same time also doing business responsibly and paying attention to energy efficiency, paying attention to renewable energy also. But um, Dr. Tuarat, what, what would be the Thai government's uh, uh, drive to, to help and to participate in such a way that I have seen and we've, we've all seen from your presentation the involvement of your government. I mean, what what does it what drive does it have so that it it has involved itself pretty uh, pretty uh, deeply and 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 widely. Patkato, it is very interesting and very uh, how my government is planned to stimulate the renewable energy by using the energy conservation fund to provide some kind of financial instrument such as soft loan and credit to make sure that you know uh, the, 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 the end consumer can enjoy the cheaper than, than the normal. Uh, uh, uh. But it's not, well, maybe some small grant would be give away, but um, uh, oh, right now, the solar rooftop on the commercial roof is very popular. Um, the price of the PV panel has dropped uh, dramatically in the past five years, and it can compete with the uh, it uh, the price of electricity from the grid. So for the um, the industry that has a large roof, either it's a commercial or it's residential, we promote uh, them to have a chance to install their own the uh, their own power panel, the solar panel. And if not, we promote the solar installer to install the solar panel for them and sell the electricity based on private PPA type. And that could be financing through the soft loan program that the government provides. So that uh, the, 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 the benefit that the government would have is the increase of the renewable energy into the system. The end consumer would enjoy the cheaper uh, price of electricity. And also the installer, most of which are SME, can enjoy the job creations uh, activity as well. So I think it's time to, you know, join hand between the government and the private sector to drive this forward. 
However, I do believe that some kind of, you know, the combination of carrot and stick measure, a, a good balance between carrot and stick uh, is a good way to go. Uh, stick would mean some financial uh, support, but uh, a, a carrot would mean uh, some financial support, but some stick measure would be, you know, uh, each industry has to set the goals to reduce their energy consumption or looking at the long term to become, you know, a net zero or a near zero industry in the soon future. But thank you very much. But this is this is uh, this is my answer. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Tuarat. Um, actually, we have a question uh, from uh, I think Sketsa Saka. Uh, originally, uh, they require a, a presentation, which we will take care of that. And then there is a question to you, Mr. Uh, one of the major obstacles in energy efficiency you mentioned is complexity of MRV process. Can you elaborate more and how do you, how do you or industry overcome this? Can I take that question first? Uh, yes. The most of the MRV complexity would be about the double counting. Uh, but if you know the clear guideline of the form to fill in is clear, then the MRV could be easy. For example, in my country, we have a form for a designated industry to fill it up. Sometimes they use the, uh, they, they have a fuse to generate electricity and then uh -huh. electricity has to be consumed within their own factory. But when they, you know, they, they provide the information, the data, uh, most of them can provide both fuels uh, uh, as a raw material and also the electricity that used in the factory. It, and that can be seen as a double counting. So the, the process of, you know, a, a clear guideline on how not to do the double counting would help. And of course, the uh, a regulation or a guideline from the government and to have a clear uh, form, similar to uh, when you fill up your tax form, if it is clear, then it's easy. But if it's complex, sometimes you go, ah, oh, no. So, so this, is, this is what the Thailand has been doing. However, there are some uh, industry that could, you know, some of the, fuels can be used as an energy fuel and also as a raw material. Uh, for example, a chemical plant. So um, you have to make sure that uh, the, 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 the factory knows which goes to which portion, which, which uh, uh, one go to the energy portion, not the raw material portion. Thank you, Bob. Wonderful, thank you for the answer. Was that uh, satisfactory, uh, Sketsa? The answer. Um, by the way, we are the 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 organizer is already uh, emailing the presentation to you. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you. You're welcome, Sketsa. Uh, the, the document is on its way to your email. Any other question? I saw uh, Firman Shah early on. Uh, I think if I remember rightly, he had a question uh, again to Dr. Tuarat, uh, and that is that maybe knowing Indonesia, uh, as far as you, as you know, how would your uh, technology, um, uh, sorry, actually this question is uh, for Bjorn. Uh, Bjorn, uh, there's a question. Uh, I know it's Indonesia is new to you because you mentioned that in your presentation, uh, in your speech. But there was a question, how does your technology and product suit Indonesia? Uh, well, we, 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 we have been uh, looking into Indonesia for a little while, so we have a basic uh, idea. 
I understand to begin, first of all, anyone knows that Indonesia is a nation that consists of many islands uh, and that there will therefore be um, a lot of distributed uh, power. Uh, I also heard that the, uh, that the Indonesian government uh, will be uh, encouraging or, or even mandating that diesel, diesel gensets are replaced with other power solutions. If you replace a diesel genset uh, during the day with, with, with PV or, or something similar to that, you'll have uh, power in the day, uh, but not at night. With our energy storage, you can oversize the uh, PV field a little bit, uh, charge our test pods electrically, with, uh, heat them during the day, and then you will have 13 hours uh, additional power throughout the night. I think there are many uh, areas in Indonesia that could benefit from, from these um, uh, resorts on islands that are currently powering themselves with diesel, especially uh, eco resorts perhaps. Uh, I understand also that Indonesia has a large mining industry, oil and gas industry that probably have off-grid industrial processes and stuff that need a base load power production. You will have uh, agriculture, uh, that, that perhaps dairy or or or, or uh, slaughterhouses or or any any kind of cold storage that need to run 24/7 uh, also and, and does not want to run on diesel. Mm. Okay, okay. Well, as you know, um, uh, you know Indonesia or PLN has a Hikmat here is present. PLN has a program to to do what we call a, it's a tongue twister de dieselization <laughs> and, uh, and basically the, the plan is uh, to replace the small diesels uh, engines uh, in the in the in the remote very remote areas with renewable energy and i don't know beyond maybe uh, maybe your product can replace that we can we, we can help to de dieselize for sure okay all right well, okay, um, I don't see the questions. Uh, there are more questions, but uh, Hikmat, uh, thank you once again for exposing to us that our beloved PLN is doing sure. a lot of, uh, <laughs> yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of activities in this area. <laughs> um, I mean, any, any, any one or two or top two or top three things that you would like to see the participation of the private sector. I mean, you have here uh, Bjorn, of course, you have here um, uh, uh, Niels, right? Um, they are from good companies with good technologies. Uh, how do you see the private sector participate in achieving your goals in PLN, Pahitman? Okay, uh, thank, thank you, Gatot. <clears throat> Actually, uh, currently, uh, PLNs uh, open the technology based on the digital transformations. Mm. Of course, uh, the participation of the private sectors, uh, especially on the technology solutions, is uh, encouraged to us uh, and uh, the regulators in order to uh, deliver uh, some of the, the renewable power plant uh, solutions. And you mentioned uh, this is uh, our concerns. How our tech new tagline on the corporations, power beyond generations means we uh, commit to uh, deliver the green power to the customers, to the, the industry, in order to uh, make uh, the very clean energy uh, at the markets. Of course, uh, we open collaborations with uh, all private sectors uh, based on the technology solution and of course, uh, our uh, change at the 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 desilizations means uh, we have been uh, doing to change the the distributed uh, diesel power plants to uh, the renewable uh, energy uh, power plants. This is a very uh, concern to us uh, to collaborate with the private sector also. That's the additional uh, information, Pagato. Thank you. 
Wonderful. Thank you, Pa. Because um, I myself have been, I've been uh, doing business in the electricity uh, area and a lot of my years I've been collaborating with PLN, of course. Uh, time goes fast, Pa, when you go and do business in electricity, you know, suddenly you know it. When you wake up, it's already 33 years or 34 years doing business with PLN. <laughs> so it is good to see that PLN is developing into, uh, into something that is uh, catching up with the present uh, era of technology. Uh, so that um, the way I look at it is because partly PLN is opening up itself to collaborating with the private sector. Uh, and that I appreciate PLN by it much. Um, maybe Niels, any any comments uh, about this these discussions that we've been having? Yeah, well, there's actually uh, one red line that I see throughout uh, all the presentations and uh, discussions so far that I just want to uh, to bring up again, uh, since we are anyway coming to to the end of this discussion this session. Actually, these kind of applications, energy, energy efficiency measures. Yeah, we had the carrot and stick uh, picture. Yeah, one is to push customers, to push energy consumers towards energy efficiency applications and uh, measures investing by themselves. But mostly in the, uh, in any way, when we start on the, on the level of uh, like low hanging fruits that we see everywhere, present in, in this field, it is mainly for the user's own good. So there's one term that I want to bring up that is actually visualizing and bringing or picturizing that when we change to the total cost of ownership. So to consider one investment as a total and to consider the total cost of ownership for this investment, then we see, for example, investing in a more efficient motor to bring up a very simple example just throw out this 30 years old, low efficient electric motor driving the conveyor belt in the factory. First thing is to see the investment. I have to invest a certain amount of a million rupiah for this new motor. Total cost of ownership means how long will it last? What is the energy consumption, the savings? So the return on investment, and then for sure for the maintenance and so on. But the total cost of ownership in the end is heavily reduced compared to the old version. And same encounters for yeah, the more complex solutions as well. We've seen Thailand is moving very fast ahead. I've seen many projects uh, also in the presentation coming here uh, from the Thailand side, where, which I'm familiar with because indeed uh, here, the Thailand government has recognized this is, it's like meeting all the criteria, bringing down carbon emissions, reducing the dependency on imports, on fuel, on uh, gas imports, on natural gas imports, or the LPG imports, by simply using this kind of fuel, which is burned then in a more efficient way. So there are so many aspects. When we see the holistic picture, just step back one or two steps, see the more wide picture, and then it's so clear. That is, is uh, the first way to go. The first fuel, we save energy so that the overall consumption is simply reduced with these energy efficiency measures. That's the comment from my side. Thank you, Neil. So energy efficiency is the first fuel. Correct. Correct. All right. Again. Well, I have one last question. Uh, it is a very important question, according to me, because it's from a, from a student of ITB from Ma Yulisari. Ma Yulisari is asking, I guess, the question to PLN, Pa Hikmat, when more industries utilize their own electricity from renewable energy, i.e. solar panel, for example, rooftop, PV, for example, how will PLN respond to this since industry is one of PLN's consumers? Bagaimana, Pa Hikmat? Okay. Mm, thank you, uh, Pa Gatot. Uh, in terms of the PV rooftop, uh, we already uh, released uh, our new products uh, called uh, PV rooftop total solutions, means based on energy purchase. This is uh, our response to uh, market needs uh, who uh, want to uh, 
builds the uh, PV rooftop uh, solar panel uh, on uh, their uh, property. Of course, uh, this is uh, currently we discuss uh, with the Minister of Energy in order to uh, make some uh, improvement on uh, Ministry of Regulation uh, of the PV rooftop uh, Ministry Regulations. Of course, uh, currently uh, we monitor uh, how many uh, PLN customers use a PV rooftop and then uh, we uh, integrate with our systems in order to recalculate uh, the export and import the uh, energy production from the PV rooftop. This is a very challenging uh, to PLN, of course, uh, because currently we offer supply uh, on the other side and the uh, the other side, uh, we have to commit to uh, build uh, together with the, our customers on the renewable energy based on a PV uh, rooftop solar panel. That's my uh, response to, to these questions. Okay. Thank you so much, Pak So, Ma Yulisari, uh, the, the basic uh, response is that, uh, you know, it has to be living side by side, but PLN knowing, knowing it, really well its business, uh, having your own power generation at your own factory obviously has to be not only uh, safe, but also has to be uh, in accordance with the regulation of the government. So that's basically it. Okay, well, we have uh, run over about three minutes, but that's pretty good. Uh, we've got excellent speakers right on time, very interesting uh, uh, messages products and all are uh, in sync. And thank you especially for our next door neighbor, uh, Dr. Trawat, Tawarat, uh, for your sharing. And of course, PLN, uh, the place where I've been earning my living and making business with for many, many years. Terima kasih Pak Hikmat. Niels, being a good friend in energy efficiency. Niels and I, by the way, everybody is, uh, is active in the Maske, work group on industry. So we, we often share ideas about what is the next thing that should happen in industry uh, sector with regards to energy efficiency. And beyond my first time meeting you, very interesting product. Let's talk more. I have your details. So I am very interested uh, in all these things. So once again, everybody, thank you so much. We have picked our participant to 75. And uh, despite the weather, uh, it's heavy rain where I am now, but the connection, the internet connection has been excellent. So we are blessed with all those things. So once again, thank you everybody and have a great week and a great time. Thank you. Thank you.